Hello everybody, this is Albert with the Green Tea House. I hope you're doing well today. Today we're gonna to talk about the difference between green tea and Shen Pu'er or raw Pu'er. Now before we begin, if you haven't done so already, please visit us here at the tea store in Green, Texas, which is outside of New Braunfels, Texas, which is halfway between San Antonio and Austin. Also subscribe and hit the notification bell so these episodes come fresh to you. Post a comment if you like. Also, we have these episodes on podcast form if you have an Apple product, you can go to the podcast app, the purple app, and search tea fundamentals and herbals. The fundamentals of tea and herbal fundamentals. That's it. Or you can type in green tea house and it'll pop up. So if some of you like to listen to this content, maybe in your car and podcast form is a lot easier, um, you can do that. All right. So some people would be like, what? Poor and green? What similarities do they have? Well, of course, both of these are two of the six categories or families that come from Camellia sinensis. And we've talked about it before. What does each of those categories mean? Like what exactly is green tea? What exactly is white tea? What exactly is yellow tea and blah, blah. So if you're new to this channel, then scroll through and go back to the early episodes, episodes one through eight, we'll go through those. But there is a similarity between pu'er and green. Why is that? Because some of you guys are like, well, pu'er tastes like earth, it's liquid dirt. And how could it have anything to do with green, which is 0% oxidized? Okay, well, remember that pu'er has two categories, raw and ripe. So raw pu'er, also, also known as sheng pu'er, uh, is different than ripe pu'er, which is shou pu'er. And so for the, for the point of this episode, we're going to talk about raw pu'er and green. Because, yeah, there's not a lot of similarities between ripe pu'er or shou pu'er and green. So if you've ever drank raw pu'er or sheng pu'er, it's green. It's green, kind of tastes like green. So if you do like a, a Coke Pepsi blind taste test like they used in the 80s, where they don't tell you which is which, you're like, which is, is this the green or is this the, the, the raw pu'er? There are similarities, and why is that? Well, because raw pu'er is essentially a green tea. It's essentially a green tea that's gonna have microbial buggers on it that's going to cause it to ferment. And so because of that, there's a lot of similarities. So let's review, what is green tea? Green tea is when the leaves are plucked and the first thing that happens before they start to oxidize or break down is you have to stop that oxidation. So that's called kill greening. In Japan, they're gonna kill green by steaming. In Japan, they're gonna do it by frying it in a wok or heating it on a wok. That's going to freeze it in its state so it won't oxidize and go down the road of white, which is 5%, and then oolong, and then all the way to black, which is 100%. So that's what they do. They're going to heat it up high enough where it freezes it completely. And then depending on the green tea, they're going to roll it, and then eventually they're going to dry it because, remember, all tea needs to be under 5% moisture before they can ship it out. Okay. That's green tea. Now, how is raw pu'er any different? So raw pu'er, they're gonna get the leaves. Now remember, so the, the other thing is, green tea comes from Camellia sinensis sinensis, the china bush. Remember, there's two varietals. There's the china bush and the Assam bush. Pu'er comes from the Assamica bush, Camellia sinensis Assamica, which is typically grown in the Assam area of India, but also the eastern part, but also in northern uh, Myanmar, northern Vietnam, southern China, and so forth. So raw pu'er is going to be the Assam leaves. And then what they're going to do is the fundamental difference between it and green is that they're not going to heat it up to all the way to kill green it. They're going to heat it up enough, but not enough enough. And because of that, that's going to allow the microbial growth. And then depending on what they're going to do, they're going to throw wet rags on it, and that can increase the microbial growth on it that's going to eventually, after several years, would lead to ripe pu'er. So they heat it, but not enough. And so that allows the microbial growth. And because the microbial growth on sheng pu'er or raw pu'er, that's what's going to alter the taste. And so sometimes if you've had raw pu'er, when you drink it and you don't know anything about pu'er, you're like, man, this tastes like a, like a, like a musky green, <laughs> like a kind of, not like a stinky green, but like a, like a weird, a weird green. It's because it's essentially a green that hasn't been kill greened all the way. And that microbial growth is leading to that strangeness of taste. Most pu'er that you find in the world is going to be ripe pu'er, that 
earthy, dark tea that tastes like liquid dirt. That is more popular than raw poor. The last thing is, so in the 1970s, they found a way to accelerate the aging of puer from the, the raw puer to the ripe puer because normally it would take a long time to accelerate. So with the raw puer, they heat it up, but the leaves are still a little wet, and that's why they compress them into bricks and cakes and whatnot. And then from there, it's going to just naturally age because of the fermentation, the, the microbial growth on it. And this could take years, if not decades, to get to ripe puer. But in the 1970s, the tea masters in China found a way to accelerate the process. So now you can get ripe puer you know, within several weeks. And some of the purists are like, I like the old way, blah, 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 which is totally fine. But raw puer, ripe puer do taste different. They're going to look different. Raw puer looks like a green. Raw, uh, raw puer, ripe puer, I should say, it looks like, uh, like, like a dark tea, like a black tea, like a black leaves. And they're going to taste different. So that's a fundamental difference. Green tea is 100% kill greens, whereas ripe, I'm sorry, raw puer is almost kill green, which then allows for that subtle taste difference and then allows it to get on that road of full fermentation and then eventually it becoming uh, the good old fashioned ripe puer. Guys, post in the comments. Until next time, take care. God bless.